What's going on guys, this is Stigward. Today we're gonna be learning how to hack Android games using Frida. In particular, we're gonna cover how to reverse engineer the Java and the native components of an APK uh, before jumping into how to hook and modify functions with Frida. By the end, you'll be able to create a working God mode sheet for Assault Cube and have a better understanding of reversing Android apps as well as using dynamic instrumentation to create sheets. There will be a link to some prereqs down below to participate in this tutorial, but the basics of what you'll need are a rooted Android device, Frida installed with the Frida server running on your phone, uh, Jotx for reverse engineering Android applications, the Android Studio and platform tools in order to interact with your phone over Android Debug Bridge, and a decompiler for native code. I'll be using Binary Ninja, but Ida Pro or Ghidra uh, are also perfectly acceptable. The last thing you're going to need is the actual APK itself. So we can see here that I have Assault Cube. Uh, this is actually an X APK, um, which indicates that it is zipped um, and there are multiple different APKs inside of it. So we can actually unzip it as if it were a regular zip file um, running unzip against it. Uh, we see that it extracts a number of different files. Um, so we have the base APK. This is going to be our regular Java application. And then it looks like we have a number of uh, separate pieces of that application for different languages. Uh, so we see um, somewhere in here is our, yeah, our English version. Um, and then we also have this file here, which is going to be of particular interest to us as well. Um, based on the ARM64, uh, kind of part of that title, we can assume that probably holds our native libraries. And we know that Assault Cube was originally written in C and C++, and it's highly likely that they just compiled that with the Android native development kit, and then wrote a little bit of Java on top of it to bridge it to an Android application, uh, and, and use that as a means of porting it over to Android. And so most likely most of the game logic is gonna be inside this ARM64 file, uh, but we can confirm that by jumping into uh, some reversing of the net.cubers.assaultcube.apk file. Okay, so here we are in the netcubers.assaultcube.apk uh, decompilation uh, using Jotx GUI. And in particular, we've opened up the Android manifest file. This is the file that's going to give us a little bit of a better understanding into the different components of the application and what activities we can interact with. In this case, it's very small. And this kind of further confirms our suspicion that some of the or the majority of the application code is going to be in a native library somewhere. And so Android allows for native.so libraries to be loaded into the application space um, by using a function call uh, load library. And so we can just search this uh, in our text search tool and we see that uh, the assault cube package is loading in a library called server as well as a library called main. Um, these are probably exactly what they say they are. And so the one that most likely has our client game logic in it is going to be main. And so at this point, the best thing to probably do is load the main library into binary ninja and poke around at it and try and confirm if it is in fact handling the game logic. And so as I previously mentioned, we kind of can assume that the native libraries are in this ARM64 V8A APK as the rest of the APKs seem to deal with language configs. Um, and we can unzip that again, just using the standard unzip.arm.64. And we're just going to replace all because we don't really care about any of the other files. Um, and we can in fact see that libmain.so um, is in fact in this directory. And so what we can do now is load that file into binary ninja and have an analysis run on it and see if we can't determine whether or not the game logic is stored in there. Okay, so here we are in binary ninja and we've run an analysis on the binary and we can in fact tell that this is the uh, game binary, the, the main assault cube functionality. We see things about maps and um, players and damage, etc. The other interesting thing here is that the binary itself isn't actually stripped. And so we get all of the function names. And I was going through them a little bit and I came across this interesting one called do damage. Um, again, the end goal here is to write a God mode sheet and we need to find a function to do so. And so do damage seems like an interesting one, uh, particularly because it takes a two player characters. Um, so it has this player entity, arg2 and arg3. 
And we can kind of assume that one of these is the player inflicting damage, while the other one is the player uh, who is receiving damage. Um, we see kind of early on in the function that it is dereferencing this global variable called player1. Um, and if we jump into player1, um, it's also stored at a static address, and it seems like it's going to be a reference to our particular player. And so what we can do is if we can figure out which one of these parameters is the damage, um, we can actually dereference that address as well in our hook. And we can say, hey, if the person taking damage is the same as our player, automatically patch out the damage to be zero. And if that is the case, our player will take no damage to his health and he will end up having God mode. And so that's kind of the general idea of the script that we are about to write um, and we can jump into it. Now there are some great tutorials on Frida online, and in particular I want to shout out this 11x256 uh, GitHub account for some Frida Android examples. In particular, we're actually going to use his loader, and what this loader does is it actually just um, attaches to the device that you're hacking on, so your Android device over USB, and then it spawns a process based on the package name, which we have the package name for Assault Cube in our Java reverse engineering, um, and then it's going to attach to that uh, process ID and inject a script that we write, in this case his was named s1.js, um, in the same repo here. Um, it's going to inject that script and load it into the actual process space in order to uh, conduct the hooking. And so we're going to use this exact script, and then we're just going to rewrite s1.js to do what we need it to do. And so here we are in a text editor with that script pasted in. Uh, there are a few changes we're going to want to make right off the bat. The first is changing raw input to input. Um, raw input is a Python 2 uh, function, and we'll be using Python 3. Um, the last thing that we're going to want to change here, actually two more things we're going to want to change. One is the time.sleep. Um, since we're loading a native library, sometimes those can take a little bit longer to be pulled into the application. And so we want to make sure our script is going to run on startup. And so we want to make sure that the, the application's already loaded that library before we try and do anything with our script. And then the last part is going to be our package name. Uh, the package name is located in the in the Android manifest. Um, you can also grab it off the device if you already have Assault Cube installed. Um, but in this case, it's going to be net.cubers.assaultcube. And now that we have the loader set up, we're going to go ahead and create our s1.js. Um, this is going to be our main script that can that does most of the hooking functionality. And so the first thing we want to do, I'll write some comments to show kind of the general functionality of what we want to do. So we want to first find the base address of our library then we want to get the offset to our function after that we want to um, attach a interceptor to our function and modify the on enter callback and so what an interceptor does in Frida is it says, hey, before we the instruction pointer actually executes this address, um, let's check what the arguments are. And it will give us a callback with all the arguments and allow us to perform some operations on those arguments or modifications before they get passed to the hooked function. And so first we would just want to get our base address, which is equal to module.find base address and we are looking for lib main.so um, next we want to check to make sure that it did actually find the base address so if uh, we need some parentheses if base address uh, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new variable called interceptor, and this is going to be of type interceptor, which again comes from our Frida documentation. And we are going to attach to the base address plus, or sorry, it's dot add, and then the offset, um, which we can get from binary ninja here. And that's just going to be the address of our function. So we're going to copy this address and do that. And then we need to define the callbacks here. Um, 
And now we just need to define the on enter callback. Um, and this is going to be run when the instruction pointer gets to that base address plus x9074c. Um, and what we want to do first is let's just log the uh, the different arguments to make sure that everything that we understand what the function is doing. And so now the interceptor is set up and we have all of the arguments being logged out. Uh, this should tell us what each of them are um, and it will print directly to our console. We've installed Assault Cube and we have it up and running here. Um, I also have my Frida server running on the Android device um, and we should be able to go ahead and run our loader, um, which will reboot the application. And what you're looking at here while this starts up is a cast of my rooted Pixel 6. Um, but here you see we're rebooting the application. Uh, we do find the base address. Um, and now if we jump into the solo training, um, we can go find a grenade. And so I have a grenade here. Um, I am going to switch over to it, throw it against the wall and intentionally kill myself. Um, and we see that we get a number of arguments. Um, so the first argument here, um, we have a pretty good guess that that's probably our damage. Um, so that's because, you know, our health was 100 and we have a lethal force which killed us. Um, our damage may have been 105, so we had less than zero health. Uh, second and third argument, as expected, these are our player entities. Um, so these are pointers. Um, they look weird because they're not in hex, uh, but they are both the same address because they are both our player character. Um, our fourth argument, fifth argument, and sixth argument uh, don't seem to be super relevant to us, um, but this gives us a good idea of what we need to do. So we need to take the damage argument and we need to understand which of these the first or second argument is actually the inflictor of the damage and which one is inflicting damage now the last thing to do here is to check and see if our player is the one who is having damage inflicted against him um, and we're not sure if arg2 or arg3 at this point is the the player taking damage um, however after looking through this function um, I can tell you that it is arg2 who is the victim um, and arg3 who is the attacker. And if you wanted to confirm that, you could honestly just log both of these out uh, the same way we did the hook last time. And you could go into a bot match and kind of confirm, you know, every time I take damage, it looks like my player is logged out first. And every time I'm inflicting damage, he's logged out second or whatever it may be. Um, but this is the correct order based on some additional reverse engineering. And so at this point, um, we can write the last part of our script, which will, um, which will take into account uh, all the things that we've just talked about. So we first want to get our player pointer. Um, and we can do this by grabbing that global player variable that we see here. Um, so we're just going to find the value of this. And we'll copy that and put it in our script. Now we need to take into account the base address. So we will create an effective address and we'll do the exact same thing we did for the interceptor. So we will say base address dot add and then we will take in the player pointer. And so this should be the value of the player pointer when the library is loaded. Um, and what we need to do is we need to dereference that value and, or dereference that pointer and get its actual value. And we can do that with a pretty cool uh, function provided by Frida called uh, get pointer, or sorry, read pointer. And we pass in the effective address and that will read the value of our player pointer. Now we just need to compare that to the second argument, um, which is the player taking damage. And so we can say if uh, player value dot two int 32 equal equals um, args and we'll say one oops one uh, two int 32 um, then we want to patch arg one um, and the reason for that is arg one is the damage value and so we'll say arg zero equals pointer and we'll make it zero 
So this should be taking zero damage now. And so this is our full hook. Um, and it should give us all of the arguments to our function call, um, as well as if the second argument, the player taking damage, is uh, equal to our player, uh, we will patch out the damage argument, and so our player will take zero damage. And so we can run our loader now, and I will pull up the screencast again, and we see Assault Cube loading. And I want to just go ahead and jump into a offline match, um, just to confirm, one, that we can still inflict damage against uh, enemy players while taking no damage ourselves. And so you see this player shooting us, we are getting zero damage, but if we shoot him a couple times, and, you know, mobile gaming is not my forte, but we are still able to kill him. Um, hopefully this tutorial was helpful. If you enjoyed, please feel free to uh, like and subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more, check out Guided Hacking website. Uh, there's plenty of additional tutorials on Android as well as all other forms of hacking.